Welcome back to Harbour Unbox for another top five series video. Once again, I will be looking at CPUs. In my previous top five CPUs video, I picked what I felt was the best budget CPU, uh, best value all rounder CPU, best value productivity CPU, best performing gaming CPU, and the best extreme desktop CPU. This time though, we are going to be focusing solely on gaming performance. So we're picking each CPU based on almost nothing other than its gaming performance. For the close fought battles though, we will take things like platform cost into account. Uh, but for the most part, it really will be all about those glorious frames per second. So for this one, the categories will include the best sort of entry level gaming CPU. So a cheap pick there, then the best affordable CPU. So that's just spending a little bit more money and then the best value CPU. So that really can be any price there. It's just which CPU offers the best value for whatever reasons. And then of course the best no compromises gaming CPU. And as a bonus, once again, we will be doing the best second hand deal. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. Previously, the Pentium G4560 claimed the best budget gaming CPU category, and at the time it really couldn't be touched for well under $100 US. This year though, saw the release of the Ryzen 3 2200G, and with an MSRP of just $100 US, this quad-core processor offers way more power for not a great deal more. As a bonus, you also get entry-level like discrete GPU performance with the integrated Vega 8 GPU. Other alternatives in this price range include the Ryzen 3 1200, which is basically inferior to the 2200G in every way. And then we have the Intel Core i3 8100. Uh, the Core i3 processor is very similar when it comes to gaming performance, and actually, depending on the game used, it can be faster. That said, it does also cost $20 US more, and with years of life still ahead for the AM4 platform, we feel budget gamers probably are better off with the 2200G as it is just a considerably better investment or should prove to be a considerably better investment down the track. Right, so last year we did name the Ryzen 3 1200, which at the time was selling for just $110 US as the best affordable quad-core gaming CPU. Since then though, for the most part, I think it's safe to say we have moved on from quad-cores, at least at the sort of mid-range and beyond. So this time we're upping the budget to $180 US to include the significantly more capable Core i5-8400. Now, before AMD fans smash their keyboards across their FreeSync monitors, take a deep breath. That's gonna be okay. I recently named the Ryzen 5 2600 and 2600X as the best value all-rounder desktop CPUs at around $200. Uh, if you're running core heavy applications as well as gaming, then I feel personally that the Ryzen 5 series is a better choice here. You can even overclock the Ryzen processors to deliver superior performance in most games. However, in order to really beat the Core i5-8400, you need expensive Samsung BDI memory. You then need to manually tune that memory, and you also need to invest at least $20 US in a better cooler to support the overclock. And this is particularly true for the non-X model. The Core i5-8400, on the other hand, smashes it out of the ballpark with the absolute cheapest Intel 300 series motherboard you can find, and the most bog-standard DDR4-2666 memory on the market. So it's a seriously cost-effective, hassle-free option, and it's well-suited to gaming. Okay, so for those of you who find themselves primarily GPU bound when gaming, which I suspect is probably most of you, then something like the Core i5-8400 or Ryzen 5 2600 will do nicely. But if you're upping the GPU firepower or perhaps playing titles such as CSGO, Overwatch or Fortnite on super high refresh rate monitors with competitive settings, then you will want every last frame possible. And to do so without breaking the bank, I feel like the Core i5-8600 is the best CPU here. Priced at an MSRP of $257 US, it's often found selling for around $240 US, and at that price it really has no direct competition, particularly for those looking at doing nothing other than gaming at high frame rates. Overclocked to 5 GHz, 3600K can easily extract every last frame from a GTX 1080 Ti, for example, or perhaps even two of them, for those few titles that still support SLI. Mm -hmm. 
If you've got a GTX 1080 Ti, maybe two of them, something even better, I don't know. You've got a lot of money to spend on graphics cards is basically the point I'm trying to make here. And you want the best gaming CPU the market has to offer, then it really is the Core i7-8700K. Intel's low latency ring bus architecture has proven to be the best solution for gaming. And then when you couple that with a CPU that can comfortably run all cores at 4.7 gigahertz with something like MC enabled in the BIOS or can be manual overclocked, I would say to at least five gigahertz, then you've got yourself a real winner. I think it's been proven now that there really is nothing that can touch the 8700K right now. Uh, the nearest competitor when it comes to pure gaming performance is probably Intel's own Core i5-8600K. So this pick then really should be no surprise. Uh, we've had the same opinion since the 8700K was released and the second gen Ryzen series really didn't change anything. They're extremely good value, but if you want the best of the best, it still is the 8700K. Perhaps AMD can take the gaming crown away from Intel next year, and many believe that they can, but for now, Intel does still hold that crown. Last year, I recommended secondhand shoppers be on the lookout for a cheap Core i5-2500K processor. And even today, if you can get one of those really cheap with a motherboard and memory, then that is a great deal because they can still play a lot of games really well. This time though, I am recommending something far more recent in the Ryzen 5 1600. Uh, currently, they do retail for $190 US for the most part, brand new. But I've noticed quite a lot of good secondhand deals. And you would assume that the CPUs are in good condition. They would be relatively new. They can't really be more than a year old. But of course, how much you would pay for these CPUs will differ from region to region. Slap that on an affordable B350 motherboard. I've seen a few decent boards on the secondhand market selling for as little as $40 US. So that's a serious bargain. But if you can't find one secondhand, there are still some really good boards that you can buy brand new for $70 US. And doing so means you'll have a cracking good gaming system that you'll be able to upgrade in a few years time with a Zen Plus, or no, a Zen 2 CPU. We just had Zen Plus, a Zen 2 CPU if need be. Well, there you have it. If you're a gamer looking for the best gaming CPU for your next rig, then this should have you covered. The price range extended anywhere from $100 US all the way up to $360, and there were a few good options in between. So if you like this video, feel free to slap on a like. We very much appreciate that. And feel free to let us know what your top five gaming CPU list looks like, or just let me know whatever's on your mind. I'll browse the comment section down below with caution. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I will see you again next time.